Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to build a synthetic top quilt. Now the quilt I'm showing you here is built for Colorado summers, so it's good down to around 35 degrees, but you could modify this design with thicker or thinner insulation to make a warmer or cooler sleeping quilt. This quilt is built to be as light as possible, so it uses membrane tin nylon, which is a super lightweight nylon for the inner and outer shell, and Climashield Apex 5.0 for the inner synthetic insulation. The quilt itself is 72 inches long by 55 inches wide with the taper. It has a zippered removable foot box, weighs in at 19.7 ounces or 559 grams, and it costs around $75 to make. I think this is a perfect beginner DIY project and it's a great way to test out quilts and see if they're for you. Let's get to the project. Before we get started on the build, I'm going to show you the SketchUp that I've created, which will kind of give you an idea of the dimensions I've used, and just where to place everything and where to measure things out at. As always, this SketchUp file will be available on my website for download if you want to explore the quilt yourself. And also, I'll be putting up a list of all the materials I've used and where you can buy them. And I would really appreciate it if you do end up making one of these quilts. If you buy the materials through my links, I get a little kickback. It keeps these videos coming and it keeps more DIY stuff coming. So, let's move to SketchUp. Okay, we are in Google SketchUp here, which is a great free modeling software if you ever need to lay anything out. I would highly recommend it. And you can see here I've mocked up the quilt build. And I'm not going to go too far into how to size your quilt when you're building it. This quilt that I've laid out here will fit kind of your average person up to 6 feet tall. 55 inches wide is a pretty wide quilt, although I would say if you're larger than maybe 36 to 40 inches in your waist, you might want to add a little more width to the quilt just so it will completely wrap around you and keep out the drafts. But long story short, 55 inches wide, 6 feet tall or 72 inches long, and 45 inches wide at the foot box. So you can see starting at 30 inches from the bottom, I start a taper that goes 5 inches in on each side, taking 10 inches off of the total width. And that's just to save weight and to shape the quilt a little bit better so that it kind of fans out and covers you well. All around the sides here, I've got grow grain tabs that can be used to attach a pad strap system if you would like. I don't prefer those, so I'm just going to leave those tabs on there if I ever need them in the future. On the side of the quilt, I have a 20 inch separating zipper, number five size, and that's gonna start at the bottom of the quilt and go up 20 inches along the taper on each side. At the top of that zipper, and this looks like it's attached, it's actually separate, is gonna be a little grow grain tab with a snap button, and that's on each side of the zipper here. And what that's gonna do is snap together just to protect the zipper a little bit and add a little more security to the quilt and the foot box. And then you can see at the bottom of the foot box, I also have two button tabs on each side. And those are used for the same thing. They attach together and they allow the foot box to be formed and they just protect the zipper, keep a little bit of stress off of it. As you can see here, there's a bottom channel here made out of the same material that the quilt's built out of. And that's going to be used to actually create a cord lock channel for the shock cord. And you can just tighten that up and it'll form a little cinch for the foot box. I'm sewing in a channel on the top of the quilt as well where you could add shock cord if you wanted to cinch the quilt around your head. But I'm actually going to leave it out on this build, the shock cord that is, because I don't ever use it. I prefer to just tuck the quilt around me. Alright, that's the brief summation of the quilt. Like I said, the SketchUp file will be available on my website as will a list of materials. Let's start building. All right, first thing we're gonna do is lay out the insulation and then overlay the quilt material, the shell fabric, on top of it. So now we're gonna lay out our fabric right on top of our insulation here. And you gotta keep in mind, with this fabric, there's two sides to it. You have your, both sides are a little shiny. One of them is matte, and one of them is really shiny. So the matte side is the side you want on the outside of the quilt when you're actually using it. Basically, what we're gonna do is actually sew the quilt 
as is and then flip it inside out. So that's why you want the two mat sides to face each other. One thing we're going to do to help is actually pin in the corners. Alright, once this one is fairly even and well spread out, you don't want any big wrinkles in it. We're going to add the second one with the mat side facing down, glossy side up, right on top of this. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Alright, so first thing we're going to do is actually draw out the rectangle of the quilt. And like I mentioned, the quilt is 55 by 72 inches. So we're going to add an inch onto each of those measurements so that we have a half inch of seam allowance on each side. So it'll be 56 inches wide by 73 inches long. And I'm just using a Sharpie. I'm avoiding the very edge of this fabric because it has some imperfections in it from the manufacturing process. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have our rectangle laid out on the quilt, 56 inches by 73, and what we're going to do is add in the little tapers on each side of the foot box of the quilt. So I'm going to go 5 inches in here, 30 inches up here, the two markings, and right where those cross the line at, I'm going to connect them with the yardstick here. Okay, so we've got the taper on this side, let's go do it to the other side. Now that we have the entire quilt marked out onto the fabric, including the taper at the foot end, and we've pinned on the inside of those lines so that once it's cut out, you can actually, it'll all still hold together and you could move it around, what we're going to do is cut it out. Now you want to triple check your measurements here just to make sure everything's marked out right before you do any cutting. And I've done just that so I'm ready to cut. So now we're going to use the excess fabric we have to cut the shock cord channels for the top and bottom of the quilt. Now these channels are going to be two inches wide by one inch shorter than the top and bottom width of the quilt. So we're going to do one that is 54 inches wide for this build and one that is 44 inches wide. On each of the short ends of these rectangles we're going to do a quarter inch rolled hem to protect the raw fabric and provide a safe place for the shock cord to pass through. I recommend backing up all of your sewing on this project with some tissue paper because it really helps keep this really thin fabric from getting sucked down into the machine. It makes the threading stitch much better and it just makes everything a lot easier. This fabric is a little hard to work with because it's so thin and having a backing keeps it from sliding around too much. Once we're done there, we're going to use the 5 8 inch grain ribbon to create 10 tie-out points. And we do that by taking 3 inches of grain, flame treating the edges, and folding it in half to form a little loop. Some of these will be used for the pad strap system, and the rest will be used to hold the button snaps. So on 4 pieces of this grain, we're going to install button snaps, and if you'd like snaps around your neck, you can bump that number up to 6 pieces on which you install the snaps. Now the snaps are really easy to install and this is using what's called a cam snap which is just a brand of snaps. Essentially you have one end that's pointed that you poke through the material and the other end that you stick on top of that pointed part and compress in this tool and they sort of weld the plastic together to form the buttons. It's really easy to use and the snaps hold up very well.
Now that we have all of our components made, what we want to do is actually pin them into the quilt. So as you can see here, this is the pattern we're going to be using for all of the different components in the layout. But we're going to actually be pinning them between the two layers of shell material, so between the orange and green material. For the grain tie-outs, you want them folded in half and pinned in. The zipper can be pinned in. And then for the top and bottom channels, you want those folded in half and pinned in as well. All of them will be facing towards the inside of the quilt. When you're installing the grow grain with the snap buttons here, make sure to have one facing up and one facing down so that when they snap together, you don't have to actually twist the grow grain to snap them. You want the buttons to work as intuitively and easily as possible. Additionally, with the zipper, the side that's facing up is what's going to be the outside of the quilt. So if you want the outside of the quilt to be the green material like I do, put the top of the zipper like this facing up and make sure you do it the same way on the other side of the quilt. Then the final and perhaps most tedious part is folding the shock core channels in half and sliding them between the two layers of quilt shell, and then pinning them in place. Once everything's been pinned in, it'll look something like this with everything between the two layers of shell facing inwards. And what you're going to do from then on out is sew around the entire perimeter of the quilt, leaving a one foot gap along the zipper here to fold the quilt inside out. And then on that one foot gap, you'll re-sew the two sides together from the outside and you'll have a quilt. Whenever going over any of the grow grain sections, I like to reverse back over the grow grain and cross it again just to reinforce the area. Alright, now that I have sewn the border and flipped the quilt inside out, I'm left with this one little gaping hole right where the zipper is. And what I'm going to do is pin this together here. I'm starting to do that. You want to make sure you have a fold in the fabric. And then I'm going to sew it up from the outside. And that'll be almost 100% done. Then I'll just have to add some cord and some cord locks to the quilt. That's about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you can build your very own synthetic quilt like this. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up, and consider checking out my Instagram, my website, and my Facebook page. I post on there a lot more often than I do on YouTube, and I'm always up to something, whether it be a DIY project, or just getting out backpacking somewhere. Thanks.